did you do? Well, it's a small number, and the well, by the you know, I think there's various emails which were issued at that time, but um, so I think the process, I think it was the twenty was it the twenty fifth of August that um, the story broke in the Daily Record. Um, Alex resigned, I think, on the twenty eighth of August. Um, the complaints didn't arrive, or the, cons the report, summary reports coming from the independent process. So there's no, of the, of the two processes for reporting concerns, none came through the internal route, and, and a, a small number came through the independent external route. But that was into September before they arrived. By that stage, Alec had left the party, um, and the police were involved. So there's an active police investigation by the, the point at which the national secretary received so a, a small number. Did re, the party then refer those that small number of complaints or concerns to the police? Um, um, can I stop you there? I'm getting a wee bit concerned that we could be getting into the realms of jigsaw okay. identification. Yeah. Fair enough. I apologise. I, I have no further questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cole Hamilton. Jackie Bailey, and then finally. Uh, Andy. Thank you very much, Convener. Can I also wish Mr Murrell a happy birthday as well? And I hope um, the First Minister finds time in her busy schedule to take you out this evening. Um, uh, you've spoke a lot about... Sorry? I'm, a, I'm in level four. So you are? There's you can no maybe get go. a takeaway then. <laughs> you spent a lot of time... A, if I'm a lucky boy. You, you spent a lot of time talking about um, the First Minister's statement and having read it. Can I ask you, did you discuss your evidence um, that you're giving today with the First Minister prior to coming here? No, you didn't? No. Not at all? No. Oh, okay. That's quite extraordinary. Um, you've said to others that you worked with Alex Salmond for, I think I counted, about 37 years in different guises. Um, yeah? Steady on. Slightly less than that. No, 1983. Yeah. Well, you know, so let's, let's say four decades. Let's compromise. Okay, four decades is even longer than 37 well, years, know. but there you go. Um, it, so, so you would know him quite well, and I think you said to others that there were, aside from one or two incidents, there were few concerns about his behaviour. Would that be accurate? Um, over all that time, very yeah. few. Very okay, few. that's helpful to know. Um, it, one of my colleagues raised the incident at Edinburgh Airport and obviously the contact from the press, which occurred in 2017. Um, but when was the Edinburgh Airport incident? Was it not much earlier than that? Um, the Sky News inquiry said it was in 2009. All right, 2009. Okay. And that was reported at the time to Angus Robertson, who was the Westminster leader of the SNP. Is that correct? That's, that's what the the email from Sky News said. Okay. Well, you will have discussed it with Angus Robertson, I'm assuming, because he still remains a party <laughs> colleague. W was, did he suggest that that was correct? Well, I think the committee has written to Angus and given know, him a deadline to respond. You. Well, I think I, it's only fair that you give Angus the chance to give his own okay. evidence. Okay. I was, I was asking you because I would have assumed that something, again, of that nature would have been reported to you as Chief Executive of the SNP. Was it ever reported to you in 2009 or thereafter before Sky News got in touch? Uh, it was reported to me on the 4th of November 2017 at 27 minutes past seven in the evening. It okay. kind of sticks would, in my mind for some reason. Okay, would it, would it not be strange as Chief Executive of the SNP if, if, if something hadn't been reported to you of that nature? Or does this go on often and people don't tell you things that are going on in the party? I think that... You know, I think as we were trying to, um, when we were liaising with clerks about this, it's, it's a, you know, political parties are, are, are strange beasts that are unincorporated associations. So, you know, they're, we're all just individuals. So if someone reports something to one member of the party and they don't share that information, it's not something that the SNP can be aware of. It's just... Um, I, I am a member of a political party too. I tend to know how they operate and have been around probably as long as, long as you. Um, and people are told things that go on, particularly of that nature, um, and they're told quite quickly. So I, I am genuinely surprised that you didn't know at all, because we would have known. And the, there's not that much difference in terms internally of how political parties operate. But all I can tell you is that 
that the first time in all my years working for ALEC, across 30 years, the first time I saw anything of that nature being suggested was on the 4th of November 2017. Okay. That, okay. Is, that is the truth. Okay. Um, you described the meeting of the 2nd of April, I think, to us in evidence as something you wouldn't be aware of because it was conducted by Nicola Sturgeon in her role as First Minister. Um, you've read Nicola Sturgeon's statement. In it, she says quite clearly she wasn't having the meeting as First Minister. It was as SNP leader. On that basis, would you expect to know as the most senior ranking official within the SNP what the content of that discussion was? Um, well, I mean, she sets it out in her own evidence, so you can ask her when she comes here. I mean, it's, you know, I, 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 can, I can only look at what she has written in evidence and say that sounds, you know, that, that is a reasonable interpretation of events. Okay, but, but, but your evidence conflicted with hers. You said that she had that meeting as the First Minister, and therefore you wouldn't know because it wasn't proper for you to know government business. I entirely accept that statement. The difficulty you have is Nicola Sturgeon has said, no, no, she wasn't the SNP leader. She said she was the, you know, the, not the First Minister having that meeting, she was the SNP leader having that meeting. As the highest ranking official within the SNP, would you have expected to be told about it? Well, I think, again, it's, it's set out there for you. I mean, if it was a matter that was, you know, coming to the party as something that was about to happen, then yes, I would expect to, 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 to be told. And that's what happens. I get told things when they're about to come my way. And that happens all the time. You know, similarly, um, you know, when the news was breaking, it came to me very late. Um, that, and that's just what, what happens. You, you get, it's, it's on a need-to-know basis. Okay. Um, the reason I'm exploring this is because there is a conflict, a direct conflict, in your statement compared to Nicola Sturgeon's. Okay? The, there's no dubiety about that. You have both written different things. Well, it's in black and white. But anyway, let's... let's I'll not, I just don't accept that. I'll so. not pursue the point further. It is in black and white, and the record will show that. Um, can I turn to the, these infamous text messages? Um, who are the text messages with? Um, well, the, I, I, I just don't think it's fair that I, I, I'm okay. asked to identify someone that ha, you know, has privacy rights and... OK, I think, I think the person was identified in the press already and has been identified as your chief well, operating officer but uh, you know i think that you know okay if you we, don't want to do that you know, I, I, just, I, I don't i don't think this okay. really is a um can can i ask if there were further messages from you to this party official or indeed any other party official um in the same vein I with it associated what, what, with this topic what what do you mean Sorry. Oh, in, in relation to um, the allegations about the former First Minister, Alex Salmond. And or what? Sorry. So, the, okay. Let me go back. The text messages you sent that we've seen were to your chief operating officer. I'm asking if there were other text messages to any other party official on the same subject. No. No. Not that I'm aware of. No. Not that I can okay. Know. Okay. Um, you say in, in your evidence to the committee, you're coming here before the committee, that you conferred with Ian McCann, who's the compliance officer, and Sue Ruddick, the chief operating officer, that no other relevant information was found. Um, can you repeat that under oath? Well, it's in, it's in my evidence, so... Sure. I'm, I'm just asking you to confirm that under oath, that there's nothing else there. There's nothing else, no. OK. Um, in the criminal trial, one of the witnesses um, was reported to have said that the situation with the former First Minister um, was indeed reported to Ian McCann and recorded in his file. Is that true? Whose file? Um, Alex Salmon's file. Well, I don't think... I mean, there isn't an Alex Salmon file. So there's no such files exist. So I'm just simply going on the basis of the testimony at the criminal trial that somebody said they reported it to Ian McCann. There's no files. 
No, I mean, I'm aware that there was reports sure. of such text messages in the press. I wasn't in court. I, I don't know about these okay. text messages. I'm, I'm basing this on what I read in the, the, papers, the yeah, newspapers. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you aware of any contact between Ms Ruddock and special advisers or ministers about the judicial review? No. So you're not aware of it. Um, were you aware that a WhatsApp group was formed on the day that the judicial review was lost? Um, and uh, it, it was a group convened, I understand, by the Chief Operating Officer. Were you aware of that WhatsApp group? I'm not, no. Okay. Did you see any of the messages in that group? I'm not aware of any WhatsApp oh, group. Okay. So. so you're not aware of the WhatsApp group. Um, again, uh, gleaned from the press, at the preliminary hearing, I understand that one of the messages talked about government special advisers were convening a council of war. Do you understand what that means? Well, I've already explained I, I don't know anything about a WhatsApp group, so... No, no, I, I, I'm just asking about if you understand what, what the messages might mean. Did you ever hear talk of government you, special advisers? Are, sorry. Sorry? What, are these WhatsApp messages or are they text the, messages? These were WhatsApp messages, and I'm asking you, did you I, ever I, know about government special advisers convening a council of war? I, I, I can only tell you I know nothing about a WhatsApp okay. group. Okay. I'm not on WhatsApp, so okay. it's, not a, it's not a social media that, platform I use. Can I say that's a very sensible thing Thank to you. do? <laughs> but that's for another day. Um, did, did Ms Ruddock at your behest encourage people to make police complaints from autumn 2018 onwards? I, I don't think we would, you know, that, that's not something that staff would, would do. We wouldn't, um, we, that's not something that would be appropriate, I don't think. So, no, that's, um, okay. but, you know, I'm not aware of any of what you're, you know, describing to me. Okay. And Thank it doesn't, you. it doesn't fit with, it, it fits neither with, it, it fits, you know, it doesn't fit with the compliance side of things. It doesn't fit with the duty of care and it doesn't fit with the independent process either. Um, that's not what we would do. Okay. We would not say to people, go to the police. It's not something, unless it was something that was, you know, clearly, you know, and obviously a matter for the police to, to look at. Okay, I understand that. Um, can I then turn to your, your actual messages that, that were shared with the committee and, and ask you again, what did you mean by the police will be twiddling their thumbs and so it's a good time to pressurise them? I've set that out already. It's not, you know, the language I used wasn't, and, you know, I don't think was appropriate. It's, it was pretty out of character, I would say, for myself, but um, I can only just explain that as being some, you know, how upset I was that morning. Um, but the reality and the context was that we were approached by people that morning who sought answers to questions that could only be answered by the police, you know, whether that's the, the police that had been, you know, allocated to take their statement or whatever, um, they should go back to the same police officers and ask questions to seek the clarity that they were looking for. But, but, but you are a man who has been in politics by your own, you know, words for four decades now. You are a man who is very careful with his language. Text messages invite, invite you to be brief and invite you to be very clear about what you're saying. Are you saying that, that for one day in 40 years, you got it wrong? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, because um, of what we were dealing with that morning um, and the previous day, it was, you know, we were all gutted by what we had um, seen roll out over the previous 24 hours. Okay. It was very flat, very emotional time for everybody in headquarters. Um, it was very upsetting. But, sure. you know, so yes, I would, hands up, I would say I, the language is not appropriate and, you know, I, I do very much regret those words and, um, you know, I just put it down to the hurt and the, um, you know. Okay. So, so can I ask then, when you said the more fronts he is having to firefight on, the better for all complainers, what was that about? Um, that, well, that, that's a, you know, I think I've worried, I, I think I've worried, um, I worry all the time about this still, um, but I, I do worry about the women, so, you know, that's what that's about. 
Good, and I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that you do so. Um, if my memory is right, by this stage, I think Alex Hammond had resigned from the SNP. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to understand what the party interest would be if you were making him fight on two fronts. Um, did you encourage anybody to make a complaint to the Crown Prosecution Service that there was a party member or a non-party member? No. No, you didn't. OK. It, I'm sure you would recognise, I hope you recognise, um, how dangerous it is for a senior official, the, the, the most senior official of a political party, with such a close personal relationship with the head of government um, to interfere in a police investigation. You wouldn't do something like that, would you? I wouldn't. No. OK. OK. Um, can I turn to the question of the letter? And I'm, I'm, I'm coming to a conclusion, convener. Um, it, you provided us with the letter of the 31st of October from the First Minister. Was this the only letter that was issued on harassment or the SNP disciplinary process? Well, that, so that was issued on, in 2017. Um, further, at the time of which Alec, you know, the news broke about um, the allegations in the Daily Record, um, I think there was a repeat of something similar at that point of um, providing people with the, 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 the two processes for reporting complaints. Okay. Um, can I ask... Which is just of, of, of sure. what was in that original email a year earlier. W would it be possible for the committee to see this because we haven't been provided with that letter? Right. Um, well, I can take a look at that, yeah. That, yes. that, that would be he very helpful, thank you. Can I ask, was that letter sent to party members, was it sent to staff? You know, who, who was it sent to? It was, I think it was sent to all members of the party. Um, you know, because okay. one of the, you know, I mean, obviously through the, the Me Too, um, um, you know, um, through 2017 and 2018, we had dealt with a number of different um, uh, complaints. Um, and I think one of the things that we had learned over that period was that um, even if um, something was in the media, it would spark a reaction with, with other people. So we were aware that, um, you, you know, you could cause a lot of hurt from people historically by, you know, um, you know just through the simple fact of something being in the news. So, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that whether it was on duty of care or on the methods for reporting that people had that as an option. So they had the, the prospect of reaching out and getting assistance if they had any historic issues. But wasn't, you know, it just wasn't, a, uh, you know, it wasn't simply about, you know, offering up ways to complain. I mean, it just wasn't. Sure. No, and I appreciate that. So was this sent to past members of staff as well, based on what you've said? Well, it was sent said? to all members. Um, okay, all yeah. members, but but could there have been past members of staff who are no longer members of the SNP? That's potential, yeah. Okay, yeah. was it sent to them? Well, it's sent to all members, so... Okay, well, what I'm trying to establish is if there were staff members who are no longer members of the SNP, would it have been sent separately to them? Because they wouldn't have been captured in the all members mailing. Um, I w well, we, we tried, 